Hey everyone, welcome back to Cuddy's Bookshelf. So today is my 23 favourite books that I read in 2023. Overall in 2023 I read 218 books so it was really difficult to pick my favourites because there were so many that I absolutely adored. So I do have a few honourable mentions. I want to say Why Mummy Drinks at Christmas. So I read this during my bookmas vlogs and I really enjoyed this. This really made me laugh out loud. This series is about a woman who is struggling with family life. So the kids, her husband, but even though I'm not a fan of slice of life books this is so good so humorous the different family members have all got such distinct personalities and it just makes you laugh so i had to add this on just for the book that made me laugh the most then another honorable mention is convenience store woman i really enjoyed this i liked that it just gives you the perspective of what society thinks you should be, both in a man and a woman's perspective, what they're expecting of you, even though it's not what's best for you. So I just liked that. I liked that it showed you what people are willing to do just so society looks at them in a different light. And I really enjoyed this book. And this one was really special because it was a gift from KJ. So thank you again, KJ. Loved it. The last book of my special mentions is Happy Place by Emily Henry. So this is the only contemporary romance that's in this favourite list, which is absolutely insane because I read so many and loved so many. But this one I really enjoyed. It had so many of my favourite tropes, like the ex trope, it had the one bed trope, it had the fake relationship trope, and I just really enjoyed the build up of the romance in this of knowing that they still love each other and I liked the, the way Emily Henry wrote about men's mental health in this. I think it should be something that is in a lot more books and also I just loved the friendships in this. The, the found family when you have friendships like that where it's people you choose to be your family. So yeah I really enjoyed this one too. So they are my special mentions. So some of my 23 books are like a series so I'll just group them together it's my way of trying to fit 23 books all together <laughs> without it being 23 books and here's a thousand more that I really enjoyed so the first one of my 23 books is 12 secrets so this is about Ben and when Ben was younger his brother got brutally murdered by his a couple of his classmates and now in modern day Ben is a investigative journalist and another murder happens and it brings up where it might be linked to his brother's murder also so he gets involved in that I could not put this book down I read it so fast and I didn't realize at the time that this is going to be a trilogy or a series I think it's just a trilogy and 11 liars was also out and I went out and brought that straight away. I really enjoyed that one also, but I had to put this one in because I was addicted to this. So yeah. The next book is The Only Middle Grade in this stack and this is Green Wild, The World Behind the Door. I really enjoyed this. This was my first read from Perry Thompson. It was so, so good. Such a good adventure. Had me drawn in. If you like your adventurous middle grades and especially because it was like about like botanists and it was all about plants and the different types of plants and what you can use them for and the friendships that gets made in this and the fact that even though the girl in this her mother has gone missing and she finds this other world it's just magical loved it absolutely loved it definitely my favorite middle grade this year. The next lot of books is all by the same author. It is a series. I became obsessed with this series during 2023 and it is the Thursday Murder Club. So you would have seen these on my channel. I became obsessed from the first book. I think, I 
can't remember if it was the second or the third I think it might have been the third book I wasn't as drawn into but then they like Richard Oseman come back really well with the fourth one and that just draw out so many emotions in me and I just love this series so this is about four OAPs in this luxurious um, retirement village and they get together every Thursday to solve murders so these cold cases in this one which is the first one a murder just happens to happen around them and obviously the Thursday murder club get involved I absolutely adore this series the way that these OAPs get so underestimated and they just get to be this force together and I, it's, it's just great I'd love to spend time with these <laughs> these characters but yeah Thursday Murder Club is definitely on the list the next book is a thriller and it is The Housemaid this is a bit like 12 Secrets where I read this one didn't realize there was a follow-on and needed it straight away so I have read The Housemaid's Secret also really enjoyed that one but this one I was addicted to it to the point where my husband don't generally read that much but I was telling him about this book and he I was that enthralled in it that he even grew intrigue into it so he was like what happened what happened like every time I was like oh my god oh my god even he after I'd finished the book said I might actually pick that up and I'm like but I told you everything that happened and he was like yeah but I think I still enjoy it reading it for myself and it's just so good so this is about a woman who has been in prison she's living in her car she really needs somewhere to stay and a job basically because everybody needs money and she applies for this housemaid job and it is a living housemaid so she goes for it and gets the job but as she's going around the house and then actually sees where she's staying where her room is it is very weird like if I was in that situation I'd be like no thank you keep your job I'm I'm, I'm gone it no <laughs> but she obviously is in the situation where she needs a fixed address she needs a roof over her head she needs money so I get the situation that she is in but right at the beginning I was just like no 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 mm -mm, mm -mm. but it is so addictive I at this up loved it the next book is survive the night by Riley Sager so this was a gift from Kelsey so thank you Kelsey and I loved this so know that feeling that you get I said this when in my wrap up of this book but know that feeling that you get during a thriller when it's getting to you're getting really close to finding out who the killer is so you get that angst in you like the, the, the killer's close or you know what I mean that build up of oh my goodness this was like that all the way through so this is about a girl who friend has just died so she's at university her friend has just died and she just wants to get away she needs to get home she don't want to stay there anymore it's too difficult for her and instead of waiting a week where someone I think it was her then boyfriend would have been able to give her a lift home she just wanted to get out there as soon as she could so this man offers her a lift home and as they are driving things get really weird and she starts she has this ability where she sort of hallucinates so she can't remember if the thing that happened actually happened so you had a lot of confusion going into this and then the man driving would say these weird things and you think that is, is he the killer is he the killer so you get that angst all the way through where you're just like oh. and it was just constant throughout the book so I just really really enjoyed this one so yeah another thriller on there my next book is my only Greek mythology retelling on here which is shocking but I didn't read that many this year to be honest um I've just read a really good one but you'll see that in the future videos but this one is Lies We Sing to the Sea by Sarah Underwood. This had me gripped. I think I had read a what um oh which one was it? I think it was was it Ithaca? I read before this and I wasn't like a big fan of it. And then I picked this one up and I was addicted. 
I could not put it down and the ending to this I was it needed to happen the way that it ended but it was still really sad it's like you knew that that's what was gonna happen but it didn't take away from the hurt that you feel with it happening this is about the cursed kingdom of Ithaca and them having to sacrifice 12 maidens to Poseidon and the women end up with marks on their body which is their way of knowing who Poseidon wants and this is about a girl who is one of the maidens it's just honestly loved it absolutely loved it really like this edition of it too the next book is by Claire Keegan and it is Foster this is the most tiniest book but man does this pack a punch so this is about a girl who goes to stay with her aunt and uncle because her mother is about to give birth again her auntie and uncle have took her in whilst all of this is going on and she builds up such a good bond with her aunt and uncle it's so much is in this tiny little book i enjoyed this book that much that i went out and brought all of claire keegan's books that i knew was available i have not read any of them yet but i am going to get to them and they're only tiny so they'll be great filler books also but this one did pack a punch and if you're looking for a tiny little book to read the writing in this mm. so good so good so the next one on the list is god killer by hannah kenner this fantasy was so good i cannot wait to get into the next one this is about kissing who is a god killer until one day she finds a god that she cannot kill and his name is skeddy and he has attached himself to this little noble girl and Kissin takes her with her to try and find a way of breaking them apart so this god can live without her because she is scared that if she kills the god she will kill the little girl also but the the friendships they make on the way so the the found family feel in this is amazing i love Kissin. i love her attitude the way that she comes across so blunt but inside you just know that she's got a heart of gold and she will if she promises you anything she will keep that promise and she will sacrifice herself to keep her promises and it it, it oh mm, such a good fantasy really enjoyed that the next book is more of like a, a cozy academia book and it is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. So this is by Heather Fawcett. I really enjoyed that the, the main focus was the academia side of it. The way that she was trying to build up this encyclopedia of fairies. The little things that she would do to try and communicate with the fairies and how it builds. It was really cosy. It was set around winter time. So it's like a cosy read when you do read it. I liked the, the, the slow burn romance and I am looking forward to following up with the next one and seeing how that progresses. I just really love Wendell and his like the ying to Emily's yang. <laughs> so they just fit perfectly. Like she is really like refined, like she's very like in herself and academia quiet and he is very out there extravagant and it's the it's it's good read it the next book took me by surprise because i picked this up and i thought oh it's going to be like a little a good little thriller but it gives you such a good insight to the way media can control the publishing industry so it is yellow face this is about a woman who is a struggling author and she has a friend who is a very famous author she's doing really well for herself and then one day her friend chokes to death in front of her and they're at her house and this manuscript is just sitting on her desk and she takes it and tries to pass it off as her own and then this goes through her struggles of people finding out that it might not have been her that wrote it it was so good 
I really enjoyed this. It's good to see where cultural appropriation comes into things and the fact that you can go from the highest highs online to the lowest of lows. You can be on top of the moon <laughs> and you can get cancelled just like that. I just thought it was a really eye-opening read and I just loved it. Really, really enjoyed it. The next book is another fantasy and it is The Art of Prophecy. So this is about a boy who is prophesied to be a hero, basically. He is prophesied to kill this king, but then one day this king gets killed. This undefeatable king that this boy is prophesied to kill ends up being killed. And Jean's world falls apart. Everything changes and he is no longer this privileged little boy that's getting weighted on hand and foot. And, oh, it is so good. I love the character Taishi. She is so brutal with how she is training this boy. So she comes in and she's like, you are not being taught well. You need to learn your basics. You need to study books as well as the art of fighting. And when Jean's world falls apart, Taishi's there to take him and keep him safe and she just sacrifices so much for this boy it's just such a good read i really enjoyed it cannot wait to get into the next one the next book two books it's a series again so i'm roping it into one it is this woven kingdom and these infinite threads i loved these when i read these so this is like a Parisian fantasy. The way that everything is described in here makes it feel so rich, like the threads, the, the fabrics, everything seems so elaborate. You delve into the world. It's so submersive. I loved it. This series has core intrigue. It has enemies to lovers. It has magic. I cannot wait to get to the last one. I'm so excited for it. I really really enjoyed these i did like the little riddles that was in this and when it comes to the riddles it's like death speaking i really enjoyed those little parts in this so lisa is a gin royalty she's gin royalty and gin are the people that hold all of the power but they gave this up to stop a war so a lot of the gin are in hiding or have been killed and it goes from there i loved cameron and his way of being introduced to elisa where basically she holds a knife to his throat and i was like what a way to meet it's just a such a submersive fun fantasy i highly recommend this series if you have not started it yet do it and the last few sentences of this book made me jump straight into the next one so be warned if you do start this and you are really enjoying it halfway through i would order the second one in because you're gonna want to jump straight into it after the last couple of sentences of this one i'm gonna try and pick up my speed because <laughs> i don't want this video to be really really long and i've already been recording for over half an hour Ooh. so the next book is again a series but i have unhauled the paperbacks because i want to get the hardbacks of it it's a whole thing I did say in my unhaul about it all, but it is Terry Pratchett. So this one is Equal Rights. I did not actually read this one this year. I read Weird Sisters. I read uh, Lords and Ladies. I read Witches Abroad. Loved them all. I am going through the Witches series, which is in the Discworld. It is hilarious. I love it. The characters, I think... Terry Pratchett is a genius, the way that he writes with this humour, but the characters are so drawn out and lovable. I just love Granny Weatherwax so much and Nanny Og. Just love them. If you was like me, because I was quite intimidated by the Terry Pratchett books in, in the Discworld, don't be intimidated, just jump in. Pick, I see, you can do it where... You can read Terry Pratchett's books in publication order. I am doing it by series. So I have started with the Witches series and then I'm just going to jump into another one because I don't think I can go without Terry Pratchett's writing anymore. So I'm going to have to carry it all on and collect them all 
really enjoying these. It's just so fun. But bingeable fantasy. That's what Terry Pratchett's books are. Hilarious. Love them. The next book is Serpent and the Wings of Night. This one, I gasped at the end of this one. Physically went... <gasps> I can't believe that just happened. I haven't read like a vampire fantasy book in such a long time that I absolutely loved this when I got into it. I love the slow burn romance. I love the scenes where she is training and especially when it's like two enemies training together. So they, you, you get that little angst in there whilst they're fighting each other. I loved that. I loved the trials in this book. And like I said, that ending had me If you have not read um, The Serpent and the Winds of Night, there is a little novella in the middle and then there is the second one. I'm yet to read those two yet, but I'm thinking of rereading this one when I do and just going through them all and really submersing myself into it. I love that the main protagonist in this is a adopted daughter of the Vampire King and the fact that he brought her back to his kingdom and she is everybody's prey it's just so so good so so good the next book is the final empire by brandon samerson so i started the mistborn trilogy last year and i loved it i love vin she is one of my favorite female characters that i have ever read i just and this book this one in particular the thing that happens in this, if you've read them, you'll know. But the thing that happens in this to one of the characters, I gasped, cried, I was shocked. <laughs> and I was just like, no, 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 no. But <sighs> so this is about Vin, who is a street urchin. She is found by Kelsey's crew because she has these abilities so they pick her up from uh, she was living a very terrible life and being abused by the people around her so they take her K um, Kelsia starts training her because there is things called mislins which are people who can ingest one metal there's different metals they all have different abilities and they can ingest one of the metals and have those abilities or there is misborns who can ingest all metals and have all of the abilities and vin turns out to be a misborn and so is kelsia so he starts training her so kelsia and his crew are on a mission to corrupt and destroy the final empire and kelsia is also on a personal mission to defeat the dark lord Honestly, I cannot tell you. Like, I can show you, look. <laughs> this is feelings. Feelings in a book. <laughs> I had so many. I wanted to remember everything. I absolutely loved it. And the last one in this trilogy, which is, is The Hero of Ages, is it? Because I've read A Web of Ascension, yeah. So the last one, The Hero of Ages, is one of my most anticipated reads for 2024. I cannot wait for it. Incredible. I just love Vin. She's a badass. So the next book is back into the thriller-esque crime genre and it is Eeny Meeny. This series has me in a chokehold. I have read three of the books so far. I am so excited to read the rest of this series. It is 11 books. And I am looking forward to every single one. I will finish this series this year. They are incredible. The The way that the characters that you're following are so morally grey. And you feel so much towards towards them. And the, the twists in them. And the fact that you get to see little snippets of the thoughts of the murderer. I really enjoyed that in this book. So in this one, a girl emerges from the woods and she has said she was held captive with somebody else and 
they was left a gun and a note that says, kill one, one of you kill the other, and when you do, the one that's still alive will be set free. And they don't get no food, no, there's no toilets, it's literally a boxed room. There's all different rooms for the different um, couples that this murderer puts together. And it's their way of, you get to see the survival mode that they go in and that each time that the murderer picks two people, the scenario is never the same. There will be people that will gladly sacrifice themselves, people that are just willing to starve it out. And then there's others that are getting so desperate that they're contemplating actually doing it. It's so, so good. And the I love the camaraderie of the team have that D.I. Helen Grace like works with. Um, I love the way that they they work together. I love that you get to see their backgrounds as well. And that they are, like I say, like they are morally grey. They are into things that will shock you. But you just feel so much for these characters. And the the way that everything comes about and these murders get figured out and the backstories to the murderers it's absolutely incredible honestly i cannot tell you enough about reading these this one was kind of gifted to me by angela so angela i have thanked you a million times for letting me know that this is a series because i did buy book seven first and i because i didn't realize it was a series so i bought book seven from the works and then angela kindly told me that it is a series and then kindly bought me this one and I will be forever grateful. Thank you. I'm so, so excited to get into the rest of them, honestly. I know I keep saying it, but I'm just hooked. I'm addicted. So the next two are by the, the same author, but they're not a series. They are two separate books and I just really wanted to talk about them both the first one is the house in the cerulean sea and then under the whispering door both by tj clune absolutely love this man's writing so much i was so drawn into the characters in both of these this is about a man who and he just happens to work at the department of magical youth so he goes to these orphanages and oversees that they are doing what they should be doing and bringing up these magically gifted children the right way. So he comes across as like a, a genuine man that lives just a cosy life, does his ev everyday job, works for the man basically, and he just says what he sees. So he goes to the orphanages and he just writes down what he sees. He does not put any heart into it until he goes to the house in the Cerulean Sea. And oh, there is romance, there is found family, there is just absolute coziness. I love the children in this book. They are incredible. Highly recommend that you read this. And then the other one is Under the Whispering Door. This is about a man called Wallace who is not a very nice man. And one day he ends up having a heart attack and he dies. So he's there stood over his own body and yet still refusing to admit that he has died. So he attends his own funeral and while he's there he comes across this girl who is a reaper and she takes him to the tea shop and this tea shop is owned by Hugo and his family and oh my goodness. So Hugo helps people pass along. He lets them have all of their emotions, he sits with them, supports them and Wallace is still in denial about passing and it, it goes from there and the way that this book, the, like the general message of this book is it's never too late to change and be better. That's what I got out of this book and I just thought it was absolutely incredible. I absolutely adored the character Nelson who is Hugo's father he uh, is just that 
person, no, like the grandfather that you just want to sit and talk to. The emotions and the messages that you get from this book, it, it's, it really, really moved me and I really enjoyed it. So I highly recommend both of these TJ Klune books and I cannot wait to read more of his works in 2024. So the next one I'm not going to talk about very much because at this point I think everybody and their mother has read this book but I did really enjoy it and it is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaris. I have not read Iron Flame yet so I don't know, I know that that one's got mixed reviews but I loved this, I loved the trials in it, I loved the romance in it, I loved the dragons obviously. Ugh the dragons there's a theme about me liking books with trials <laughs> during this you'll see <laughs> but I just loved it absolutely loved it really want to be a dragon rider although I am scared of heights so I would probably need strapping in like Violet but absolutely adored this fantasy romance <sighs> so good but I'm not going to I'm not going to dwell on that one because I think everybody's had it in their favorites from last year so I enjoyed it too. The next book was the coziest fantasy that I read all year and it is Legends and Lattes. So I am really looking forward to Bookshops and Bone Dust which is on my TBR for the month of January. Fingers crossed <laughs> that I get through them all but I loved this. I love Viv. Viv is an org who is setting up a coffee shop in a in a place where nobody's ever really heard of coffee before. By opening up this coffee shop, Viv just wants to put her past behind her, but can she? Can she? Read it, you'll find out. The best, coziest fantasy I have ever read. I mean, just look. It has like the cutest romance as well. I just really enjoyed my time with this book. We are getting there people, we are getting there. So the next one is also a series and it is Once Upon a Broken Heart and The Ballad of Never After. Absolutely adore both of these. Oh my goodness, I didn't realise how addicted I was gonna get to these books, but I absolutely loved them. And that's why they're in this list. <laughs> I will tell you about the first one because obviously spoilers for the second. So this is about Evangeline and she thinks that she has found the love of her life. It's been her, he's been her friend growing up. They form this bond and the next minute she gets told that he is going to marry her sister. And she is distraught. She thinks that something is amiss. This can't be happening. They have something between them. So she does not believe that he's in love with her sister and then she goes to the Prince of Hearts and asks for a favour and he says you can have this favour, I will stop the wedding from happening but you have to promise me three kisses, whoever I tell you to, whenever I tell you to, you owe me three kisses and so she agrees to this. When it comes to her having to do the first kiss she realizes that maybe making promises with immortal gods isn't the best idea and it goes from there this is amazing really cannot wait to see how this trilogy ends again the third one is on my most anticipated reads i think i will make a 24 books i want to read in 2024 so watch out for that. I had a hard enough time narrowing this video down to 23 books, including honourable mentions and making things a series, <laughs> that I feel like that one's just going to be as bad to try and pick books because I have so many that I'm so excited to read in 2024. The second to last one that I have on my list is A Little Life. This book since I have read it, has stayed with me. I've thought of this book every day, every day without fail. There is something that makes me think of this book and Jude and his life and Willem. Again, I can show you my feelings. When I say this book made me cry, I mean 
you know the type of crying when you're younger and you can't catch your breath while you're crying and you sort of do the <laughs> crying this this was devastating beautiful just incredible that's 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 my three words for this book beautiful devastating and incredible that's what this book is the jude's life reading about jude's life and his struggles and his past and then his time with willem honestly i don't want to tell you too much about it because i didn't go in i knew that th this was going to be an emotional read and it was going to be hard hitting and there is a lot of trigger warnings so just check the trigger warnings if you do plan on reading this there is a lot and i knew that there was trigger warnings but i wanted to go in as blind as i could to any of it so i think you should do the same because i it like loads of people find the beginning a bit slow but i think once you are invested you want it to be longer i wanted it to be longer i love this book and this was a gift from kj so thank you again kj incredible incredible this is not going to be the best but so i have done this list in no particular order except number one number one these are my favorite books of 2023 i have already reread all of these twice other than the little novellas in the last one because i reread it adding those in on the second time round but if you've watched my channel throughout the year you know what's coming and i am addicted to this series this is one of my all-time favorite series april when book number nine comes out I think that is my most anticipated read ever and that's saying something. <laughs> I cannot wait for it to come out. I am dying to know how this series ends and I will be rereading this this year before number nine comes out. The Zodiac Academy. I don't know what is in these pages but it's somewhat addictive. I will just hold up number one because I ain't got the arm strength. <laughs> but there's just something about this series. I could not put it down. I have never read a series as big as this as fast as I did and do. Because I I've also read it really fast. I mean, look, this is book eight. Look how big that is i read the entirety of this series within like two tbrs and that is with a load of other books as well and if i had them all to hand and i wasn't waiting for them to be delivered i probably would have read it even faster i am obsessed i am obsessed so this is about a set of twins who are just living their lives but they are really really struggling and one day they get approached by a man who is a professor and he says to them, you are not who you think you are. You are Fae. You need to come to the Zodiac Academy and learn about your powers and gain your inheritance because you are also royal. So they obviously, because they are living in poverty, they could do with their inheritance and that's what they go for they have no intentions of ruling this kingdom so they just see that they could live a better life basically they go to solaria and attend the zodiac academy and when they get there there is four heirs and they are the families that are the head of each of the houses in the zodiac academy earth fire air and water and the lads that are the heads of each of these houses are the ones that's also the heirs to the throne at the minute because they um because the twins parents was murdered they didn't realize that the twins were still alive 
So they made the the four lads heirs to the throne because their families is the most foul, powerful families in Solaria. And so they have trouble with the boys that are at this academy and they get treated really bad. It goes from there. It is incredible. I have not done it justice, but there there is so much in these. Oh, it's just incredible. Incredible. And the character development in these. So in this one in particular and the next couple, the character there's one of the characters in there and i hated him he was my my least favorite character i just thought he was awful by the time you get to the end he is one of my favorite characters like how did that happen <laughs> but i loved him and i love geraldine as well butter my bagels geraldine is a queen and i hope when the final book comes out i hope lionel It, I hope that he suffers. I really hope that he suffers a very painful, drawn out, long death. And I hope that that a certain person gets to do it. And honestly, I am addicted to the series. Absolutely addicted. And if anybody wants to read these and wants to read them along wants me to read along with them i'll be happy to i will reread all of these books multiple times many many times and next time i read them i am thinking of going in and annotating them because the amount of times i want to refer back to something in these books and i can't remember exactly where it had it in i need to annotate them i want to get dual copies of all of these and just annotate my heart away uh, these are gonna be colorful once i have done with them absolutely number one favorite books of the year the zodiac academy 100 percent. i think about these all the time every day every day up there with a little life these are also like literally i was at work doodling the other day and i end up doodling quotes from books and this was the book that I was quoting from. So I was like, bottom of bagels. I was horny for the horn. It was all written down. <laughs> Obsession. Obsession. Love it. But yeah. So that is all of my 23 books of 2023 with added extras that I absolutely loved. I hope that you read some of these. If you did read any of these and think have the same excitement, for the next ones as me please leave it in the comments below i'd love to be excited with you i hope that you enjoyed this video um i hope that you had really really great reads in 2023 i am so excited to find more five stars and the follow-ons to these in 2024 honestly so excited and yeah i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up if you would like to see more from me please subscribe and i hope to see you in my next video bye Overall, in 2023, I read 218, 19 books. 19, I think it were. 18. Who cares? Um, I will jump in. So, 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 so. First of 23. See, the stack looks still looks so intimidating. Anyway, the next is the only middle grade in this film. In film. Greenwild, the world behind the door, the door, the door, the door, the door, books that I read this year, last year. Ugh. The next one is a thriller. I read this in my spooky season vlogs, and it is The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden. And I burp him. Do apologise. Had a sip of Lucasade before I uh, started filming. Bad idea. The next book is The Ha. <laughs> and his name is Skeddy. Skeddy? Skeddy. The. The, f the feel of family in this, like the family feel, where the way media is controlling the public, uh, the way the media is controlling like the 
publicate so he starts training her up it's training her up so that that dn i love the camaraderie camaraderie i love the camaraderie of camaraderie camaraderie every time i say it sounds different and bringing up these magical magically magically lily then the house under the wisp no under the whispering door so <laughs> I'm not going to be able to beat this <laughs> it's summer addictive if you I'm losing I'm losing them so I'm gonna have to put them down so there is air fire water and earth earth fire air earth fire air water yeah <laughs> Oh no, that's a spoiler. I want to refer back to something, but I can't remember exactly. <laughs> um, let me refer back to scratch out there. 